Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to create some stacked text effects in Lightburn. More of a monogram style on top and just a stacked text on the bottom. These are a lot easier to create than you might think and it's just a great skill to have if you're making signs or doing tumblers. This effect down here works absolutely great on tumblers, especially um, tumblers with a lot of real estate like sports bottles and that kind of stuff. This can be a nice effect to take up some of that space. And so what we're going to do today is we'll describe how I make both and then towards the end of the video we'll jump over into the laser and I'll show you how to take these types of designs to another level by using fill plus line. Um, there's been some changes recently with Lightburn on Fill Plus Line, and it's not in your drop down modes anymore. You don't see it here. I'll show you how to create that and really just uh, take something that's fairly simple to create and make it as nice as you want it to be. Um, so, let's the first thing that I'm going to get out of the way is how do I get my screen so it will actually fill in the text? like I would want it in the preview. Basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at a preview without actually having to go to the preview window. And what that is, as long as I'm in fill mode with my layer, I can come up here to window and down here this is toggle wireframe filled. Every time I click that, so that's when it's off, typically I work in this uh, this way because it doesn't hide any lines. You can see everything that you need to see. Um, and then if I do want to, uh, I don't want to jump into the preview, but I want to actually look what it looks like when the uh, when it's filled, I can come up to window and select toggle wireframe filled. And it basically fills in whatever color you have it selected. So if I change these to blue, it'll turn everything blue. Um, it's kind of a nice feature. A lot of times when I'm doing stacked text like this, um, I flip back and forth with this feature just to see what it looks like and uh, tweak my design appropriately. Again, window, toggle wireframe, that turns it on or off. You can also use the shortcut key of Alt-Shift-W. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to, we're going to recreate this one up top and I'll show you step by step and we'll get this top one done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, a capital letter that would typically be the last name. I'm going to use a fairly simple font. Um, you can use whatever fonts you want. You will find that if you get to uh, really or you know it's got a lot of character to it on the big letter it's going to interfere with what you're going to try to do with their first names. So keep the the, the uh, monogram letter fairly uh, simple not too crazy of a font if you wanted to you could bold it just to beef it up a little bit again it's personal preference you could italicize it lots of options there we're going to just keep it simple. And then usually what I like to do is I like to do their first names, or, and this could be uh, first names, um, you know, kids names, whatever you'd like. Um, so let's assume that this is Bill and, Tima, Bill and Tina, and you notice that I've changed the font in this particular case. And one of the things that you want to make sure that you do when you're doing this stuff, especially at first until you understand the technique, is keep the spacing between one name and another fairly narrow and you're going to see why here in a minute. So usually what I do is the first thing I'm going to do is turn this fill off. I don't want to work uh, in that mode. It's going to get confusing to you if you if you do that. So I'm going to come up to window. I'm going to come down to toggle wireframe and turn that fill off. And now we have just our lines. We're still in fill mode, but I've turned that fill feature off. I'm going to go ahead and select my names and my monogram letter and I'm going to just center them. So the Bill and Tina is centered on the C. I'm going to take that and just arrow that up. And sometimes you've got to play with this a little bit. And so I'm going to try to get the, the name kind of equally spaced between the opening of the letter C. 
Now, in order to get the C behind the first names, what I've got to do is I've got to create an outline of their first names. And we're going to merge that outline with the monogram letter C. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Bill and Tina. I'm going to come over here to my offset tool and I'm going to click it. And I want to make sure that I uh, offset it outward. And what we want to do is we want to just make sure that all of the letters are joined somehow. Now this is a this is a matter of, of taste. And so you can go up quite a ways. You notice that as you grow that outline, that back plate gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we'll play with it a couple of times and you'll see what I mean. But let's just leave that as it may. And I'm going to say you want to make sure that this delete original objects is turned off. You don't want it to delete anything. And so if I say OK, and now it's offset the text to the outside. And at this point, I'm going to leave it selected and I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select the C. And now I've got both the outline of the first names and the, uh, the letter of the last name. And I'm going to weld those together. So I'm going to go over here and use a Boolean function and we're going to weld that. And you notice now it incorporated the C into the outline of the first names in their text. And at that point, I can go ahead and uh, deselect it. And really, when you think about it, I'm almost done. So if I have this, we'll take a look at, for this as a look. If I, if I preview it, you're going to see that it's incorporated, right? It just depends on what, but you can see now that letter C is behind the first names. And that's as simple as it gets. Now you notice that if we wanted to, we could get rid of some of these little pieces, um, but actually it's in pretty good shape. If you wanted to kind of make sure that all of that interior stuff was black, you could just go ahead and come in here and make sure that, uh, like these right here, you could ungroup that and then you could come in here and just select these little pieces, get rid of the stragglers or it could be some little dots and those kind of things. You're going to have to look at it to clean it up um, and kind of go from there. And it's just a matter again of what you want. Preview it or we can come in here and go to window wireframe toggle and that's how easy it is to put that letter C behind the Bill and Tina or the first names. And again, the other thing that you can do, and I'll show you how to do this, and it's an important skill that you learn about how the fill works in Lightburn. So let's take this just one step further. So I'm going to turn this fill off so I don't have to worry about it. Let's say that I wanted a completely different look on my monogram. I'm going to take this um, perimeter selection. I'm going to offset it again and this time I'm going to go maybe not so not so drastic and I'm going to say OK. And the way the fill works is every time it crosses a line. So it's if you think of from the it from the outside going in when it crosses this line right here it's going to turn on the laser and it's going to engrave between this line and this line. And then it's going to, when it crosses this line, it's going to turn it off. So this big section is not going to be engraved. And then it's going to turn it back on. Well, watch what happens in the way your monogram looks just by adding additional line. Now you've got a nice little outline. Now you see these dark sections in here? That's real easy to deal with. We can just come in and again do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and deselect and get rid of all these internal offsets. and see what she looks like. And so if you go window, wireframe toggle, we still got something down here. All right, so we'll go back, window, and we'll come right down here. We can go ahead and just delete that.
and now you've got a cleaner design if that's that's what you're looking for so just remember every time you uh, uh, add a line or an outline to your design it will completely change the look of your stacked text let's move on to the second style okay so let's take a look at this second style we're pretty much doing the same thing except this is more of a horizontal design this looks really good on on like I said uh, sports bottles turned vertical um, signs a um, couple of things that I try to do when I'm doing this horizontal stack is I try to lengthen out the first names meaning that I'll put more space between the first name and the and just so it's balanced a little better the other thing that I will do is I will take my last name and it, it, if I left it alone and didn't grow it at all what would happen is I try to take this and put it over here and there's just no way it's going to fit very well and so either this is going to be real short or it's going to cover up most of the last name and so a couple of things that I've learned in doing this is I'll go ahead and increase the height so I'll just select it and I'll, I'll over exaggerate it a little bit um, and that way when I come down and I take my Bill and Tina it's going to comfortably fit in there and it's not going to you know it's not going to completely cover up the last name again this is fairly uh, you know up to the user so let's assume for a minute that I've got my Cooper and I've got my Bill and Tina sized properly I'm just going to go ahead and hold down the shift key select this and I'm going to center that there I'm going to go ahead and you want to make sure that both the Cooper and the first names are the same layer color if they're different layer colors you're not going to get the intended results so we're going to go ahead and uh, select their first names we're going to go back to the offset tool and again we're going to just play with it y you see um, you could if you wanted to um, leave it this way um, and if you did it would the, the, uh, it's not going to block out as many of the letters and so what I normally try to do is I grow it just enough to start to attach to these letters like that and then say okay and then what I will normally do is I will hold down the shift key select the last name and weld and you notice now that that bumps out all of those things and if we would go to our window wireframe toggle we're going to see that we've got Bill and Tina um, and you notice that it filled in the top of these O's again probably need to play with this a little bit so if we back this up turn this off and we just go command Z and we take this and we drop this down just a little bit we're just going to arrow this down just a tiny bit maybe get that Tina right in between maybe this Tina right in the middle of the opening parts of the E again you're going to have to fiddle with it a little bit go back to your offset tool and remember you don't have to use these arrows you can go ahead and um, key in your features and see what it looks like now let's just say we leave that alone and we come in here and we select this and we weld it and then we preview it and you can see that that gives you more you can read the last name a little better right now and so it's just that easy um, for, for making stacked text um, again you could come in and remove these little white parts if you wanted to but let's do the same thing that we did before let's go back I'll turn this off so we can see everything let's assume for a minute that we just grab this outline and we add another outline and we'll make it fairly thin just to keep it clean and if we go wire toggle form now you can see that we've just got the outline for both the last name and the first name and you know it you could clean up a few of these little pieces but in all in all 
it's just another effect that you can use to uh, build your signs and stack your text. I hope this information was helpful. If you uh, like the content, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We just this morning passed our 20,000th subscriber. So thank you so much for the, uh, the support. If you have the ability, if you could hit that thanks button and contribute to the channel, I'd sure appreciate it. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a uh, part two video. And in that part two video, we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna show you how the uh, fill plus line works. I didn't want this video to get too long. So um, stay tuned for uh, part two. I'm gonna show you how the fill plus line works. Have a great day, everybody.